The sheer number of watches that are manufactured in China each year leads one to believe that the art and science of watchmaking have been practiced in Asia for centuries. However, as we shall see, when compared to countries like Germany and the United States, China's watch industry is still in its young stages. Despite this, they've built themselves into a movement-making behemoth, arguably the largest of its kind in the contemporary era. Today, we have quite an impressive number of high-end Chinese watchmakers that have emerged and are now flourishing in and out of China. However, is there proof that the Chinese watch brands have what it takes to become top players? Will they make their way to collections across the world? Let's find out. As you may know, every concept, market or business is best understood from a foundational point. What is the beginning of Made in China? Here's what we know. While early mechanical timepieces were made in Europe in the 1400s and 1500s, China didn't make its own until the middle of the 20th century. In 1955, the Chinese government tasked a handful of men with creating the first Chinese mechanical watch, the Wuzhi watch. Even though it was just a prototype, this design set the stage for countless copies to follow. By 1958, eight watch factories were built according to plan. If all goes as planned, the watch factories in Shanghai, Beijing and Tianjin will become the most technologically advanced in China. Since the firms could import the necessary machinery directly from Switzerland and Russia, production ramped up rapidly. As a result, the vast majority of so-called Chinese-made movements were merely knockoffs of their more reliable Swiss and Russian antecedents. Now let's skip to 1961. In 1961, the government issued a directive mandating the development of a pilot's chronograph for use by the People's Liberation Army Air Force. Tianjin's watchmakers would counter with the ST3, a column wheel chronograph that is wound manually. Thousands of them would eventually end up on the wrists of pilots. But again, while manufacturing and innovation continued in China's watch industry, most new movements were knockoffs of Swiss designs. But that would all change in 1965. Once again, the ST5 movement from the Tianjin watch factory was the first caliber to be designed and manufactured in China. The ST5's reputation for precision, thinness and great quality made it a popular choice. In addition, it is embellished with seagull stripes, a speciality of the watchmakers in Tianjin. And folks, all of that led to the establishment, if you may, of the Chinese Standard Movement. By the decade's close, the Chinese government had adopted a more unified approach to the watch industry. Despite their enormous success, the current watch factories were surprisingly ordered to shift their focus. More than a dozen existing watch companies' knowledge would be pooled to develop a standard movement that would be used by all of them. During the same decade, these factories would be compelled to cease production of any past movements. The SZ-1, the Chinese standard movement, traditionally called the Tongji, was to be their main focus. As such, a plethora of Tongji manufacturing facilities would spring up. They were not, however, required to adhere to any particular guidelines about branding or aesthetics. Because of this, the timepieces from each province were able to reflect the unique character and culture of their makers. But why aren't Chinese watches as popular as Swiss-made watches? For starters, there was a crisis in quartz supply. Here's what happened. Quartz watches were transforming the industry worldwide in the late 1970s, and watchmakers in Tianjin, Shanghai and Beijing did an extensive study on the technology. Unfortunately, by the time widespread production reached China, it was already the 1990s, long after they had been relevant. Also, quartz manufacturing in neighbouring Japan was too high for China to compete with. Many of the watch manufacturers did make the switch to making quartz movements, but it was too little too late. The final nail in the coffin was driven in 1997 when a nationwide decline in watch production across China's factories caused an industry-wide meltdown. But it's been decades since that happened. What's happening with these brands now? Well, first, the Tianjin Watch Factory is one of the few remaining high-tech manufacturers in China. Most are still making timepieces under their original labels. They also boost their income by selling components of the movement to companies all around the world. 
It's even believed that some Swiss-made watches and other high-end timepieces often use components made in China. Favoured for their superior quality at a price that can't be beaten, this trend is only expected to grow, elevating the status of the Made in China mark. In today's market, both established manufacturers and up-and-coming labels are competing for customers in the mid to upper price range of the watch industry. What this means is, Chinese watch brands are about to get way more popular than they already are. Just in case you'd want to explore some of them, here are three Chinese watch brands that are nothing short of excellent. First is the brand Seagull Watches. From our brief overview of the development of the watch industry in China, you may have concluded that Tanjing has always been the home of a thriving watch manufacturing industry. The company did not begin selling timepieces under the Seagull or Seagull brand name until 1992. The Tanjing Seagull Corporation is currently one of the world's largest producers of movements. Not only do they employ their calibers in their watches, but other companies like Stuhling do as well. In addition to their expertise in making similar movements, Seagull watches have contributed to the revival of the luxury watch sector. The first two Beyond was released in 2005, and in 2006 they released a double two Beyond. Some complications they provide include alarm watches, minute repeaters and perpetual calendars. Such complications can be given at a fraction of the cost of their Swiss counterparts, naturally causing quite a stir in the watch market. Nevertheless, Seagull's excellent reputation has been justified, and the company is pioneering efforts to add provenance to Made in China in ways we have never seen, and we are excited about it. Next is the Sega Design brand. Founded in 2016, Sega Design is a Chinese original designer watch brand helmed by Mr. Zhang Jianmin, one of China's top industrial designers. As a result of the high quality and creativity of its original designs, it has been honored with 16 international design awards. With over half a million dedicated followers, Sega Design has gone global since 2020. The Sega Design Blue Planet Watch is the most forward-thinking timepiece they released in 2021. Now this new mechanical watch from Sega Design Blue Planet beat off entries from Piaget, Breitling, IWC, Chanel, Chopin and Louis Vuitton to take home the Challenge Watch Prize at the Grand Prix de Horlogerie de Genève 2021. Pretty cool, right? Then we have the Atelier Wen. The cultural workshop brand Atelier Wen is one of the most promising new horological initiatives to emerge from China in recent times. Even more unusual for the watch industry, the company advertises its products as being proudly made in China. Interestingly, Ji and Hao were the company's first attempts at high-end timepieces, and they succeeded. These two pieces were not only stunning, but also a huge success, thanks to their porcelain ceramic dials offered in both white and blue, and other design details that were influenced by Chinese culture. As you'd expect, there have been several different colored Hao releases since then. Anyway, in April of 2022, the company released its most cutting-edge timepiece to date, called The Perception, and once again, it changed the Chinese watch industry forever. Atelier Wen's latest timepiece is another take on the trendy stainless steel sports watch with an integrated bracelet, and its features subtly nod to the brand's Chinese roots throughout the design, not only in the form of the peacock automatic movement pulsing at its heart. The Perception's Guilouche dial stands out because it is made by hand by Master Cheng, China's one and only Guilouche master artisan. You may not notice the classic Chinese elements that help the grey, salmon or icy blue dials of the Atelier Wen achieve a modern aesthetic at first glance, but you will come to appreciate them as you look closer. Next is the brand Peacock, another one of the first eight contemporary watch factories to open in the 1950s. The Peacock Watch Company has in recent years expanded into increasingly complicated timepieces, particularly tourbillons. 
Their Tubion Air Bosch was reportedly utilized in one of the model lines of the Swiss brand Cecile Pernell, proving that their movement was excellent enough for Swiss made. Folks, you should consider these watch brands. Moving forward, every watch brand needs to note that the demographic makeup of the luxury watch market has shifted, with millennials and Gen Z now representing both an opportunity and a challenge. Post 1980s and 1990s, buyers made up 46% of the mainland luxury watch market's revenue, with Gen Zers making about 15% of the total. It is predicted that by 2035, this category of customers will spend more than $2 trillion, according to the financial consultancy firm China Renaissance. Gen Zs set the tone for the future and may make or break a company, so it's crucial to keep up with their ever-evolving preferences. True, they've been at the forefront of a new phenomenon called Gyojou, which means national trend, and refers to consumers' preference for Chinese products. This is good news for the Chinese luxury watch industry, but it poses a danger to competitors throughout the world. Today's younger Chinese customers have come to understand that made in China does not automatically equal poor quality. Therefore, the Western label is all that's needed to compete with domestic producers. Being Chinese seems to be the key selling point for Chinese watch companies. Some Western brands' lack of familiarity with local culture and customs is a weakness that is exposed by local retailers and distributors. Particularly in international e-commerce, businesses avoid investing in a China-specific business model. For businesses, this means ensuring that their data infrastructure can access and process information from any source. The complexity of China's social media must be accounted for as user comments help foster a dynamic and ever-changing online community. But even the world's largest corporations don't completely grasp the significance of Chinese culture to the Chinese way of life. VIP member rooms, a kind of special store dedicated to premium customers, are one method that has helped Chinese watchmakers maintain or gain a reputation for great quality. Today, the game is simple.